If you've been researching how to break into tech, you're probably more confused now than when you were when you first got started. Should you start with cybersecurity? Start with help desk? Do you need to get cloud certifications? It's all very confusing. After working 16 years in the tech industry and helping thousands of people break into tech, I'm gonna teach you the strategies that actually work and help people get hired the fastest to start their tech careers. And in this video, you're gonna see exactly what these three paths are to reach success in the tech industry quickly, which certifications you need to get, and where to get started based on where you are right now. First, I'm gonna start out with the fastest way to break into the tech industry. Literally anybody can do this. So this is starting with entry level help desk or IT support roles. Help desk and IT support roles aren't going anywhere. Even with AI, these roles will be around forever. When it comes to help desk or IT support roles, this is essentially the customer service of the information technology sector. So if you have any type of customer service skills, you can follow directions and you are able to get the technical skills, you can work these entry-level help desk or IT support jobs. When it comes to getting these entry-level jobs, you might have heard people say, oh, you need to get the CompTIA A+, the CompTIA Network+, and the CompTIA Security+. Plus. That's the way to land your first job. That strategy does not work anymore. That is called the CompTIA trifecta. And the reason why it doesn't work is because it takes people anywhere from 12 to 18 months just to get those three certifications. You do not have 18 months to break into tech, even though these jobs jobs aren't going away because of AI, AI is going to reduce the size of as many help desk and IT support professionals that companies need. So you need to get into the industry as quickly as possible. And the fastest way for you to get into the industry is by getting the CompTIA Security Plus certification. Now, a lot of people think that when I say the CompTIA Security Plus, that means it's going to help you get a cybersecurity job as your first role. That is not why you're getting the Security Plus certification. The Security Plus certification shows that you should already have foundational computer knowledge. It also shows that you're dedicated enough and have enough knowledge on the security side to where companies are able to say, you know what, let's give this person a chance because pretty much everybody has transferable skills. So whatever career you're working in right now, you can take those same skills and apply them to these entry level jobs. So don't worry about not having tech experience. Just worry about getting the Security Plus certification and preparing for these job interviews. And I know you probably think that this does not work but trust me it's worked for so many people who are just like you and they started out where you were if you focus on creating a good resume that shows your transferable skills and you can literally go on to chat gpt you can go on to claude and you can create a resume that shows the skills that you already have and how they translate into entry-level it roles this will open up your opportunities and allow you to start getting job interviews nobody is looking to transition into new careers without knowing that they're going to be able to make decent money. So when it comes to these entry-level help desk and IT support jobs, depending on where you are, depending on what type of tech industry you end up working in, you'll be making anywhere from about 45k to 75k in your first help desk IT support job. And I know that's not the six figures that you hear from all of the different tech gurus, but trust me, you'll be able to get there if you stay consistent in your career. You just want to use these jobs to get started. So once you get your foot in the door, you want to stay in this first role for six to eight months, then start applying for other roles. So that way you can move up in your career very quickly. Once you get into these roles, you can start looking at cybersecurity roles, network administrator role, data center roles, cloud roles. This job is going to be your foundational job for your tech career. And I like to tell people that you can think of this as getting paid on the job training. And I know you might not want to start at these roles, but this is what's going to help build your foundation because you need to start getting experience to be taken seriously in your tech career. So you'll be able to build foundational computer skills, foundational IT support skills, skills with Active Directory. You'll also have skills with networking potentially. You might even be dealing with some cloud or cybersecurity tasks as well. Now, if you wanna make sure that you get paid the most amount of money getting into tech, I recommend an industry that nobody is really paying attention to, and that's the government technology sector. When you look at jobs in this sector, the help desk jobs on average pay 70 to 75k starting out and when you're looking for these jobs in the government technology sector you do not need to look for federal government jobs they do not pay high enough they do not hire fast enough and they're not going to get you to where you want to be at you will be stuck in entry-level low-paying jobs for a while so what i recommend you to do is look at jobs with government contractor companies on this site called clearancejobs.com so when you go on the clearance jobs you want to look up different jobs by searching ability to obtain so when when 
you search ability to obtain, these are going to be jobs that will sponsor you for a government security clearance, and it's going to completely change your tech career. And I don't want to go too deep into government security clearances, but I have a full free course on how you can break into the GovTech industry, and I'll link it in the description below and you can watch it. But let's get back to the fastest ways to get into the tech industry, because these strategies work even if you don't decide to go into GovTech. So the next path that you can take is data center roles. Data center roles are literally available everywhere. I'm sure you've seen on the news. The demand for artificial intelligence has sparked a boom in the construction of data centers all over the country. The artificial intelligence boom is fueling the rapid growth of data centers across the United States. You see data centers that are by Amazon. You see Google data centers, Oracle data centers. There's areas that have thousands of data centers in them. If you position yourself to get into these data center roles, you will be able to get a job as a data center technician. To be able to land a job as a data center technician, you're going to need two certifications. The first certification that I recommend, again, is going to be that CompTIA Security Plus certification. It's just going to help you have more validity in your career. The next certification is the Cisco CCNA certification. This is an entry level networking certification. Once you get this cert, it will allow you to get into networking roles. And as a bonus, Oracle has some free Oracle database certifications that you can get. I'll put the link in the description to the free Oracle database certs, but a lot of these different data centers run off of Oracle. So if you get these certifications, it'll help a lot. I've even seen some job descriptions asking for some of these free certifications. So take full advantage whenever you see free certifications pop up from companies. And you can apply for these jobs on Indeed, LinkedIn, Clearance Jobs, and Dice. These are the core places that I recommend that you apply for these jobs at. When you're looking for data center jobs, literally just go onto the job search websites and type in data center and look for the entry level job. So entry level would be any job that says data center technician, data center admin, maybe even sometime data center analyst. So look out for these jobs. When it comes to entry level data center roles, you'll see these roles paying anywhere from 45K to about 70K, depending on the area that you're in. Because some of these data centers are in rural areas, but there are some outside of major cities as well. Like in the DC area, there are a lot of data centers in the Ashburn area. There's also a lot of data centers in the Atlanta area. So just look to see where the data centers are based off of where you live at. Path number three to break in number tech is Linux system administrator roles. Now these roles are going to be the most challenging to get because you're going to have to spend more time building up your skills, getting a few more certifications, but this will get you paid the most amount of money. On average, Linux system administrators make 100K. So if you're able to land a junior Linux system administrator role, your first role can pay 100K. Just like Stefan, he was able to get the Security Plus certification and the Red Hat certified sysadmin certification, and he was able to land a junior Linux system administrator role in GovTech. When it comes to these two certifications that you can get, the certification that you already are well aware of is the Security Plus, and then you also have the Red Hat certified sysadmin certification. This is a Linux certification that's offered by Red Hat, and there's a lot of different flavors of Linux. So if you're into cybersecurity, you might have already downloaded Kali Linux or maybe Parrot Linux or even CentOS, even though that's been discontinued. But there's a lot of different flavors of Linux, and Red Hat is another flavor of Linux. And everything really runs on Red Hat on the commercial world because Red Hat offers companies commercial support. So if something catastrophic happened to the Red Hat servers, companies are able to call Red Hat and Red Hat will send out their engineers to fix the issue. So if you learn Red Hat over other different types of Linux, you'll have a lot of different job opportunities. And if you want to take it a step even further, Red Hat Linux skills can be your foundation to cybersecurity. It can be your foundation to cloud. It could be your foundation to DevOps or even DevSecOps. And you will be able to do this because everything is based on Linux. And with AI being so prevalent, a lot of these data centers have Linux servers. So it's going to allow you to come in and take advantage of this AI boom that's happening right now. So you could get into a Linux system administrator role. And then after 12 months, you could get into a DevOps role if you decided to learn automation skills. You could learn Ansible skills and get the Red Hat Certified Engineer certification. Or you could learn Kubernetes skills and get the Certified Kubernetes Administrator certification. And you can learn containers as well. And you really don't need any container certs. But I would highly suggest that you would learn Docker if you're interested 
ahead and go on the DevOps route or even cloud route. When you learn all of these different skills, these can be the foundation to a long lasting six figure career. And that can all start with just learning Linux. So you know that your first junior Linux system administrator role can pay you six figures. But once we start talking about DevOps and DevSecOps, also infrastructure engineer roles, those roles can pay you anywhere from 150,000 to $300,000 a year as you move up in your career. So you have a pathway to go from Linux system administrator to cloud engineer, DevOps engineer, DevSecOps engineer, or infrastructure engineer, and even platform engineer. You also can go from being a Linux system administrator into cybersecurity as well. So I believe that a Linux system administrator role is one of the best roles for you to get because you'll be so well-rounded that you could take your career in any direction. And because these are skills that are needed in the new AI revolution in tech, cybersecurity skills, cloud skills, AI skills, and infrastructure skills, you will always have a long lasting high paying tech career. So if we take it back to government technology, all of these roles are also in government technology as well, and they are extremely secure. If you've seen recently, OpenAI is now working with the government. Meta is working with the government. Oracle is working with the government. AWS, Google, all of these different companies are working with the government. And when they work with the government, it doesn't mean that you need to work for the federal government. You can work on the different path, which is the contractor path, which is what I've done for majority of my career. When you work as a government contractor for a government contractor company, you get paid higher salaries. You are also able to get government security clearances, and you're able to have a lot of flexibility and mobility in your career. In this industry, companies don't mind if you job hop. They don't care if you've went from company to company or job to job every 12 months. It's not frowned upon. It's the way that the industry works. So you should be definitely using this to advantage to accelerate your career and get to the high paying tech salaries that you see everybody else making. Now that I've broken down all of these paths, how do you decide which path is best for you? First, if you have no experience whatsoever and you're just trying to get a job as fast as possible and start working in tech as fast as possible, I recommend that you go the help desk or IT support path. If you want to make a little bit more money and be a part of this AI revolution, then you should go down the data center path. But if you know that you want to eventually become a cybersecurity engineer or you want to be a cloud engineer, infrastructure engineer, or a platform engineer, I would highly suggest that you study longer and put in more effort and go the Linux system administrator path. All of these paths can be achieved within 12 months. You can get a help desk IT support role within 90 days. You could land a data center technician role within 90 days. And once you start working in these roles, you could then job hop into Linux system administration. Or if you wanted to go straight to Linux system administrator, it will take you somewhere between eight to 12 months. And I want you to know that there is no perfect path. There's only the path that gets you started instead of endlessly researching and endlessly looking at YouTube videos. All three of these paths work. They all lead to six figure opportunities. The only difference is which one you want to start at based on what's going to work best for you. And this is all based on your current situation and your timeline that you want to get started. So I highly suggest that you just pick one of these paths, get the certifications, start applying for jobs. Because once you get into GovTech, you literally can always pivot. But if you want to learn how you can break into GovTech in the next 90 days, I'm having a completely free GovTech training that teaches you how you can utilize AI to land a role in GovTech, even if you have no tech experience, or even if you do have tech experience. So just click the link in the description. The training is happening on Tuesday, and I'll see you there.